Well, we're in a really good place in terms of that, and we hope by the close of the market this evening we'll be um, we'll have a number signed, sealed, and, uh, and making our squad stronger. So, uh, so yeah. So I think that's the always the goal that we we, we entered into this window. I've said that we want to make it uh, make the team and squad stronger, and um, and hopefully we can uh, close the market, and that is the case. I don't want to put any names until it's it's signed, but certainly we uh, that that's the aim. I think we we don't want to just regenerate the squad. We want to improve the squad, and um, yeah, and I believe that come come the end that that will be the case. So, um, as I said before, there's been a lot of hard work going on behind the scenes, and um, and of course things sometimes don't happen and until later on, either through availability or a club not wanting to sell a, a player. But uh, but there's been a lot of movement in the last uh, uh, four or five days. And um, and, and thankfully, and, and for me, as I said, the club have been great in terms of trying to push these deals through. Hello again, this is the Celtic Forever podcast. We've got John here to go through everything that's happened over the last few days. And there's been a lot. Let's say hello to John. How are you, John? I'm all right, Sander. How's you? I'm OK, John. And there's a lot to go through. The signings, the Champions League draw, the Glasgow Derby at the weekend, Bruni Watch, Rivals Corners, all sorts of other stuff, John. So let's get started straight into it. Straight into it, John. And uh, the rumours were that, obviously, Carter Vickers was going to be missing the Glasgow Derby on Sunday, John. But um, it's just been announced there by Brendan himself that Vickers is fit. He'll be playing. So all these wicked, nasty rumours, John, were all a load of nonsense. Vickers is OK for Sunday. Aye, that's good. Aye. Aye look, it is all rumours. It's, it's just a lot of bad information going about out there, but you've heard it from the horse's mouth. Vickers is OK. Let's move on. The big man, the big man starts. So that's all good. Yeah, it's good, John, and it's vital that he starts as well. And by the way, just remember this wondering what I'm doing. I'm down at Celtic Park, you know, a wee bit of an atmosphere before the game, getting into the spirit of the big game on Sunday. I'm just sitting down here doing the podcast looking at beautiful paradise, just in case anybody was wondering what was happening. Right, John, let's uh, let's get on to some signing news. Obviously, we've signed this left-back from Barcelona, Alex Valet or Val. I'm not too sure how to pronounce the boy's name, John. Do you know? Is it Valet? Uh, it's Valet, I like Frankie Valley. Right, Frankie Valley has signed a, a one-year loan deal. Uh, five feet seven inch, John. He's quite a short left back, like our Greg. Um, five feet seven inches on loan. He was on loan last year at Levante, wasn't he? And he played almost every game for them, John. So he, he's a decent left back by all accounts. So a wee bit of competition for Greg there. Aye, not before time. Uh, I had a wee look at his compilation uh, clip on YouTube. Like, you can't judge a player on compilation clips. It's just it as what it is. You see the best of these players. We'll wait and see how good the boy is. Look, he's came from Barcelona. He can't be a bad player, let's put it that way. Yeah, that's it, John. And I look forward to seeing him as well. So it's a good to have that bit of competition uh, for, for Greg Taylor. And in case he gets an injury, John, I mean, that can happen at any time. So um, next on the, the last here, John, Arnie Engels. At the time of recording, late afternoon, um, on Friday, John. He's not quite signed yet, but he is going through his medical down in London. Um, this boy's six feet, John. Arnie Engels, six feet, central midfielder. Very good player by all accounts. Um, Osberg player. Let's just know we're going to get this one over the line as well by before 11 o'clock tonight. Uh, it looks like it. Uh, he looks a half-decent player. Again, compilation clips that I've watched. Looks okay. Can they really comment any more on that? It's just good to... <laughs> Big money signings here, Xander. You know, record-breaking uh, signings for Scotland. This eleven million, it's unbelievable, John. So, yeah, that's another one. But by, by the time you probably listen to this or watch this, the guy probably has already signed. So, as it stands just now, he's not signed yet, but he is down in London with Celtic getting a medical. I don't know why he's down in London. Why not do it up here? But anyway, okay. We have to rattle through this, everybody, because there's a lot to get through, and it's only a short one today, no more than an hour. So let, let's move on. The other one um, who's more or less signed as well, John, is Austin Trusty, the centre-back, 26 years old, Sheffield United centre-back, played 32 games last season for Sheffield United. Uh, six feet three inch, so a good height there, John. Uh, the big man, Austin Trusty, he looks as though he's going to be a bit of competition for 
Scales and Big Cameron. What do you think? Austin Trusty. Again, looked at compilation clips. So I don't know who any of these players are, Xander. You know that. I, I don't watch the English game. I don't watch the, the Spanish game. I only watch the Scottish game. You know that. You know my uh, opinions on the game itself. Uh -huh. I just like the Scottish stuff. I'm all about Scotland. Scottish football in general, that's my thing. Uh, I don't know who any of these players are, but, you know, I've watched the compilation clips. They all look half-decent players in them. So if that's anything to go by, I'm sure they've got their bad moments as well. But I'm excited about uh, the prospect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. John, that's it. It's, you know, we don't know anything about any of these players. You know, we did uh, we did bring up the, the Engels and Valet thing last week. So we knew about the boys, but we never saw them play. So, um, but Trusty, you know, he's by all accounts a really decent centre-back, John. So uh, to get an extra three players over the line on deadline day would be just fantastic. But as it stands, he's not quite signed yet either. And um, these guys are all going through medicals, etc. Paperwork, last minute paperwork. So by the time you watch this, hopefully these guys have signed. Right, John, let's move on. Birmingham are looking at Iwata. That's why Iwata was missing at the weekend there, John. So Birmingham are looking at Iwata, 27 year old central defensive midfielder. I don't want this one to go through, John. What do you think? Well, you know my feelings on Iwata. That really angered me when I seen that. Uh, Iwata's one of the best players at Celtic. And I, as I kept saying before, it's just unfortunate that he's in uh, his playing position is the same as Callum McGregor. Now, he's not going to push Callum McGregor out the team, but Celtic could have accommodated that by playing Iwata in that role because I think he's ideal in there and pushing Callum McGregor up one. I've always said that you're not going to lose the... Callum McGregor's ability if you push him up one I think you get the best out of him when he's playing there but aye, that one really angered me Xander I really hope that doesn't go through Yeah John it's um, it's going to be a busy night for Celtic it really is uh, Birmingham are definitely, definitely sorry, interested in Iwata so we just need to watch the space for that one hopefully by this time tomorrow as far as I'm concerned hopefully by this time tomorrow he's still a Celtic player John right we need to move on because there is a lot to go through Look, McGowan John Brendan's interested in Luke McGowan, Dundee captain. So obviously we mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, but nothing really came of it. But it came to the surface again on deadline day. Uh, it'd be good to see Luke McGowan itself. John, he's not going to replace any of our current midfielders, but good as a backup player, I suppose. So. Uh, I like him. I, I like Luke McGowan. I think he's a half decent player. I, I would certainly welcome him at Celtic. But like you say, I don't think he's going to push anybody else out of the team. Backup player, that's all he's going to be, I think. But you never know with these players. Sometimes they come in and, you know, they're, they're made for the club. So you just don't know. That's it, John. Yeah, John. That's, and the more quality players we get in over the door, the better, isn't it? You know, you can't have too many good players at the, at the club. Um, so another one, John, we're going to, it's going to be a busy, a busy night, obviously. We need to, it'd be good to get four or five over the line, wouldn't it? Certainly would. It looks like a busy day down the other day. All the cars going by. Yeah, John, it's busy, busy, busy. I was just trying to take in some atmosphere before the big one at the weekend, Sunday. So, yeah, it's it's quite busy. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a beautiful day as well in Glasgow, John. Obviously, you'll know in Glasgow. It's very, very warm down here in Glasgow. Um, OK. Yeah, that's, that's, that's warm here as well, Xander. It's a nice day here. Maybe that's Rangers fans running a bit looking for steel for their stadium. I don't know. <laughs> we're going to get to that John because obviously we're going to touch on the Champions League and we're going to touch on their draw and rivals corner as well so there's um, I mean the weather for the weekend on Sunday John sorry is to be a scorcher I don't want to say it's going to be roasting because the last time I say that it poured a rain it? <laughs> so don't listen to what I'm saying here but it has to be very warm over the weekend so I'm really looking forward to the game on Sunday Hey right, John Matt Riley this crunching tackle from Crawley player Jay Williams, an absolute signal, John. Absolutely feel sorry for it, Matt. That's him crocked. He's going to be out for at least three months, John, because he's needing ankle surgery. There's going to be a recovery time, etc. etc. We all know what happens for wee bad ankle injuries. Uh, it's just very unfortunate for Matt, you know. And uh, ho hope you get better soon, Matt, and back into the, the team down at Brighton, John, because that was a signal, Jay Williams. Rocking Matt O'Reilly, what do you think of that on his first performance? I well, I don't watch the English game, but when I heard about that, I think it was my dad texted me and he told me about that. So I, I watched the the clip, the highlights clip on YouTube, 
mm-hmm. just to see just to see that tackle. Yeah. Like, that's an outrageous tackle. That's a red card. That's a straight red. Off you go. Don't know if it was because it was so early in the game. What, six minutes gone or something like that? It was, John, very early. early. Yeah, first 10 minutes, yeah. But even at that, that is reckless to say the least, Sander. And that guy's laughing. He walked away laughing and winking and all that. Uh, I feel, I feel, I'm like you, I feel sorry for Matt. Uh, and all I can say is I wish Matt a speedy recovery because that's a sickening challenge by an absolute thug. Um, and it should be looked at and the guy should be banned for a few matches because that was deliberate. It was reckless. A possible career type ending tackle. It was a horrendous tackles and that guy walked away for that laughing. I just, I don't get, I thought the refs up here were bad, but that's very, very poor officiating. Yeah, I think that would go to their review board down there. A tackle like that can be left unpunished, John. I know a, a yellow card isn't a punishment for me when it comes to tackles like that. So, as you say, John, speed of recovery to Matt O'Reilly uh, after his ankle surgery. Hopefully he's not Aye. out. Well, you know, it's, you know it's bad when the Crawley manager comes out and uh, apologises to Brighton for it, you know. Apologise to Matt O'Reilly. Never mind apolog- apologising to Brighton. Apologise to Matt. He's the one that's been injured. He had tears in his eyes. It's upset him. It's obviously very painful as well. Aye, that look. If that happened up here, we'd be going on about it all year. I, I probably look. The Brighton fans will be going on about that for a long time. They've just spent twenty six million pound on the player. Yeah, you know. Yeah. It's uh, an, anyway. Look, good luck, Matt. If you if you're listening, I doubt you're listening. But if you ever they get around to listening. You've got uh, all sympathies here. It's a brutal, brutal challenge, and the guy's an animal. Yeah, John, we had a similar tackle on Palmer a few weeks ago, didn't we? So it does happen up here as well. Um, and he got away unpunished. I mean, as I say, yellow card, no punishment. Uh, right, Brad Lyons, Brad Lyons, he uh, Brad he gets sent he gets sent off on was it Saturday or Sunday? Aberdeen were playing against Kilmarnock. He went in with a really reckless tackle on an Aberdeen player. Uh, and he gets sent off. Now, the one they put in on Palmer was 100 times worse. I don't know if I mentioned that to you, but if you watch the highlights of that game, you'll see him getting sent off. The guy's just an animal, Xander, that Brad Lyons. Shocking, yeah. shocking behaviour. He is an animal, John, and it's, um, he got his punishment against Aberdeen, but it's got free against Celtic. So, John, that's um, it, does, it does happen up here it, on a regular basis, especially on Celtic players. Right, John, let's, let's move on. Uh, Lager Bielke, he's off, isn't he? He's on loan to FC20. We've mentioned L- Lager Bielke. Gustav Lager Bielke, John, for a wee while now, haven't we? But I'm finally away. So all we can say is good luck to big Gustav Lager Bielke. Good luck, big man, in your future. Uh, just a pity it didn't work out from it. Celtic, nice big guy. Good luck to him, Zander, that's all I can say. Yeah, well said, John. Yeah, totally agree. All right, let's run, quickly run through who's left then. John, right, this is just a wee sum up, and it's it's not over yet. I've still got a few hours to go to deadline day for end to end. So, O'Reilly's gone, O's gone, Lowell's gone, Pax Ivanovic is away, Daniel Kelly's away, Vata is gone, Quan is gone, Lagabelke, we've just mentioned, he's away, then Murray's gone, Joe Hart's retired, Kobe Ash is away, and Sigrist is away, John. That's a fair chunk. Off the wage bill there, I'll make that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 main players have left the club, John, already. And there's a few sort of a B-team players left as well, but that's just the, the main ones. What do you think? 13 off the wage bill. James McCarthy as well. McCarthy, yeah. Is he, is he away, John? Is he actually, is that confirmed he's away? I think it is. Uh, it? Has, this contract's terminated. He's off. Um and who's the other one that's linked to a move away was Naroki, I seen the day. Him and Awata linked to me moves away. Yeah, I'm not sure. I won't see Nawata, but um because that's the one that stuck out, you know, that's the one that's annoyed me a wee bit. I want, I want Awata to stay. Um but I think he's off anyway, John. I don't know who the other one was to be honest with you, but um so far it's thirteen anyway, and it's a fair chunk, isn't it? It's you know, you know, you can make a good team out of the eleven. A very good team, in fact. Ah, it's a better team than what Rangers have got. Um, <laughs> they could, they could uh, aye, aye, look, we'll only have no laugh, but at the end of the day, they look, these these boys were never going to be regulars at Celtic, but the only one that upsets me out of all that is uh, what we just spoke about, Iwata. Yeah. 
Yeah, John, that's it. And obviously Matt Arelli, we'd want him to stay, but we've got the big bucks for Matt, didn't we? He's more or less paying for the, the, the deals going through the day. So, um, all right, John, let's move on. Um, let's get into the preview of the game, right? Because there's still lots to go through and we're on 14, 15 minutes already. Uh, beating is the ref for this one, John. We sort of knew that was going to happen. We mentioned that a week ago that beating would be the ref before we actually knew. But the shocker for me, John, is they put beating on the ref duties and they put Dallas on the VAR. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, they're pulling all the stops here, aren't they, John? Dallas on VAR and beating the referee. We're sharing with your thoughts there. Uh, ah, it's bad, it's bad. Um, and we've kind of seen that one coming, but like Celtic's got to look after themselves anyway. So just Celtic's got to forget about VAR and go and do an honest job on the park. That's what Celtic can do against any team. You've got to beat these referees and you've got to beat other teams as well. Celtic's always played like that, they keep that in mind when they're playing. That's why you don't see Celtic players going for dirty tackles and all that because they're a, quite a clean team. So, yeah. They know, they know what they're doing. Uh, you've just got to watch for dodgy penalty awards and stuff like that. That's the only thing you've got to be aware of. But if Celtics show up and play their A game, Rangers ain't going to stop them. No, no. No, you're right, John. And as you said just two seconds ago there, John, I've got this sort of jotted down here as well. No reds. We can't afford to go in with any crunching tackles. Definitely not. And uh, we can't afford to give away any penalties. Soft penalties, obviously, we need to be very wary in the box. But as you said as well, John, we've just got to play our own game. We can't even afford to go in thinking, like, oh, I can't make this tackle, we can't do this, can't do that. We've just got to play our own game. That's all you can do. Just play your own game. Play your A game. That's what you want to do against them. You've got Dallas and Beaton there. So you're fighting against that as well. Look, they might be okay. Who knows? We don't know what's going to happen. But aye, it's Celtic play their A game. It doesn't matter who's on VAR and refereeing. They'll be unstoppable, Sander. That's the way I look at it anyway, but they've got to show up and play the game. Yeah, absolutely, John. Yeah, and that's all we can do. Uh, we've, got to beat the, we've got to beat the Rangers, we've got to beat the ref, and we've got to beat the VAR as well. So it's going to be tough. Nobody's saying it's going to be easy, but I'm really looking forward to it, John. Uh, right, bearing in mind we haven't signed all of our new styles yet. There's a few going through medicals. Um, but the left back signed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. John, you know, you've got Alex Valley, he's in the door. So predicted eleven. I don't know if Celtic would even start with any of these players anyway on Sunday, but predicted eleven, John. Bear in mind everybody's match fit. What are you thinking? What's your predicted eleven? Yeah, uh, I don't think he's gonna start with any new signings, so let's put it that way. I think it's gonna be Schmeichel, Vickers, Scales, Arthur Johnston, Greg Taylor, Carl McGregor, Rio Hitati. Paul Bernardo, Maida, Kyogo, and uh, Nicholas Kuhn. Yeah. Well, uh, if we get um, Engels over the line, John, do you think he could possibly start? I don't think so. I don't think we're seeing that. We have had the uh, Derby deputants that's performed really well in the past. So yeah. uh, possibly, I, I, but we don't know. Um, I think Brendan's a guy that likes to stick to what he knows, but look, there's no much time to get him in training and stuff before a derby match. That's the only thing that might go against him. If he signs the night or the day, I don't think he's going to be started for Sunday. He might come on as a sub if we're winning, her, but I don't know. Look, we can't predict the future. I think he's going to go with the tried and trusted, and I think Bernardo's going to start. OK, John, I'll quickly run through mine. Casper uh, in goals, Greg at left back, Alistair at right back, same two in centre back, Carl Vickers, Liam Scales, Carl McGregor in the anchor role. Then I think it's going to be um, Hatati, obviously, but I think Engels is going to start if he signs John instead of Bernardo. Then I think it's going to be Maida on the left, Adam Ida up front, and James Forrest on the right, John. So we we difference there. Obviously, we're just. You know, we're fooling around here. Nobody knows anything. You know, it could be totally different. Um, but mine's just slightly different for yours. So we'll just wait and see what happens on Sunday. That's it. Nobody knows. Um, I, I just think Brendan's a guy, to, especially in a derby match. He knows all these boys have played in the derby match. So that's why I'm saying he's going to start with the same old, same old. But and like I also says, 
Celtic have been known to start with debutants before who's played well in derby matches. So you might be right, I might be right, none of us might be right. <laughs> we'll wait and see. That's it. That's it. All right, John, let's get into some of the, the betting, right? We always like to do this, gamble responsibly. If you put anything on that John and myself say, uh, okay, the odds, interesting odds, John, for a Glasgow derby. Celtic 13 to 20, roughly one to two there, John. So hot favourites, really hot favourites. I've never seen that in a, in a Glasgow derby before, not in a long time anyway. 17 to five the draw and 17 to four a Rangers win. So I'll make that one, two, three, four, nearly five to one, John, for Rangers. Um, between four and five to one there. Um, so Celtic hot favourites. Aye, but you can tell the bookies are, they're no, uh, they're no that sure. Air Celtic one, you know, because uh, normally teams come to Park and it's uh, 17 to 1, 18 to 1, or whatever. But Rangers uh, around the 5 to 1 mark, yeah, the bookies are no daft, you know. But uh, aye, aye, it's good odds for Celtic, it does favour Celtic, you know, it is Celtic are the favourites, clearly. But we'll wait again, we'll wait and see. We don't know what the score's going to be. It's uh, the bookies seldom get it wrong, do they? We keep saying that, but on occasion. They do get it wrong. Yeah, on occasion, John, they do. So uh, that's the betting anyway, the outright, win, outright winner betting. Anyway, John, let's go touch. And by the way, broke up there a wee bit. It's quite a wee bit of bad feedback, so hopefully that disappears. Um, 2 to 1 Celtic, 15 to 2. 2 nothing to Celtic is 9 to 1. 3 0 to Celtic is 14 to 1. And 3 1 to Celtic is 11 to 1. Obviously, the, the correct score competition is on a separate video. That's on a reel. Just look out for the reel above this video and you'll get your correct score competition for the Glasgow Derby joint. I think there must be like 300 entries on Facebook. And that's only friends and followers on Facebook, John. It's no public. And there's only something like 15 entries on YouTube. So get the finger out, YouTube. Get entering the competition into the reel and get your correct score for the... I think it's the Lisbon Lions metal wall plaque, John, this week. A beautiful prize up for grabs there. So, uh, no many entries on YouTube, John. What do you think? Of that? What's, what's going on there? I've got no idea what's going on with YouTube. Um, it's just, just YouTube's really weird. I mean, I still think they're holding views back after the strike, the two strikes that we had. I think they're still holding views back. I definitely think that there's something no right there because this podcast should be getting a lot more views than it does. And I just find the whole thing very, very strange. Because, uh, look, other podcasts seem to be doing, doing okay. I flick through them. I don't watch them. When I'm looking for Celtic stuff, I see them, and they seem to be doing okay. So I don't see any reason why we're not doing okay. There's no difference, you know. We just talk the same stuff they talk. Um, I don't know, Xander. I can't explain it. There's also one of our friends who I speak to on a regular basis, John, one of the podcasts, and it's, this this podcast got 34,000 subscribers, and they're only getting 1,500 views, so there's something going wrong with YouTube just now, and I noticed today as well, John, I put YouTube on, just we'll, we'll move forward in a wee second, but I put YouTube on, and there was a one, you couldn't skip this one minute advert, one minute advert, John, and there was five separate adverts in this one minute. And you're forced to watch it. So YouTube is really, really changing, isn't it? Oh, it's went downhill. I mean, I, I think a lot of people's uh, moved away from YouTube. There's other streaming platforms you can watch. Um, but YouTube's went to the dogs since Google Google took over it. They bought YouTube and then it went to the dogs, basically. It just It's just an advert fest, like you say, unskippable adverts. But I'll give you a wee tip. If you watch YouTube on your Fire Stick and there's an advert, just click right out the video again and go back into it again until the advert's no there. Yeah, it's good to know, John. It's a, it's a wee tip, as you know. Um, but it's it's quite bad. it's quite poor. Um, but we stay loyal with YouTube, John, because that's where a lot of our subscribers are, obviously. Um, we could go to Facebook and get three, 4,000 views. Not a problem, but we stay loyal to our, our uh, subscribers on YouTube. Right, John, let's move on. Um, Celtic are unbeaten in six against Rangers. So we've got a great record, recent record against Rangers. We just hope that continues on Sunday. And there, since Brendan's came back in, he's uh, he's unbeaten against them, which is really good. But well, it's a derby match. We never take it for granted. I never, ever say for any derby match, easy one, 
you'll never hear me saying that. But what I will say is, if Celtic play their A game and don't get distracted by the occasion, Celtic will win that easily. That's the way I look at it. Mm. But that's only if the circumstances are there. Celtic playing their A game and they don't rise to the occasion and get involved in uh, the, the dirty side of the game. Celtic's got to play the Celtic way and if they do that, they win. Simple as that. Yeah, that's right, John. And uh, and we're hoping that's the case and we will get a wee prediction after you very soon. Um, for score prediction, that is... Uh, so it was five un- uh, unbeaten against Rangers, John. It's five, no six. But we're unbeaten in the last six games. So we're going to this one on really good form. Um, Rangers going to this one with three wins and six, John. A couple of draws and a defeat there for them. So Celtic are the team on form as well. So looking at the betting, John, looking at the, the form team, it's a uh, points to one winner, but as you say, it's a Glasgow derby and anything can happen. Um, and then you've got to take into account the VAR, Dallas, and the referee beating. We've got to take all that into account. But uh, I've had to overcome all this adversity in the past, John, and we've done it. We've got a top-class manager in charge at Celtic. So um, I really look forward to it, John. I, I know I keep saying that, but... Maybe yourself, what's your feelings about this one? Are you looking forward to it? You've got a wee bit of worry about it. What's your thoughts? Aye, there's always a wee bit of worry about these games. There always is. Um, but I am definitely looking forward to it. Especially looking forward to uh, if the new players get a start. If they get over the line, that is. I'm looking forward to see if any of them get a, a wee start or no. But I know like, there's always a bit of worry about getting into derby games. Every Celtic fan is the same. You might you might look at comments on videos and they're saying five nothing and all that. I, I'm not like that when it comes to these games. I'm I'm the kind of guy that likes any kind of one one nothing penalty at the end to Celtic. I'll take that. I don't really care as long as we get the win. But I'm never overly confident. Um, judging by the two teams' forms recently, it points to Celtic really, but they need to keep that up. You know, it's. Uh, I be, I always a wee bit worried. I think anybody that tells you they'll know is uh, kidding themselves on. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, exciting stuff, John. I mean, a chance to go five points clear and what a position to be in this early in the season. Obviously, if we draw the game, it's not the end of the world. Even if we get beat, it's not the end of the world, John. It's uh, we just got to move on if that happens. But I don't think that's going to happen. I, I'm not saying that I'm feeling confident or overconfident or anything like that. I just think. As you said a minute ago, if we play the way we've been playing at the start of the season, I don't see there being any problem. No, no. Like you say, it's, if we keep playing the way we've played all season, then it's not going to be a problem. But uh, look, I haven't watched Rangers this season. I've watched the friendlies that they were in. That's it. I've not watched any of their games. So I can't really comment on them. But uh, look, they're going to try all they can to stop Celtic. We know that. Um you don't know what Rangers is going to show up. Is it going to be the long ball Rangers that we've seen last season playing a lot of long balls up, trying to catch out the Celtic uh, defenders? Or is it going to be uh, a passing Rangers? They seem to come onto a better game when they're behind Rangers, I think. That's the way I've looked at these derby games. When Celtic are winning like 2 nothing, they seem to... don't know if they take their foot off the ball or Rangers' realisation kicks in. Hold on, this is a derby. We need to get our act together and they seem to play better than Celtic in the second half of these games. I don't know why that is. Yeah, yeah I know, John. It's the last few games that's happened into we've been two nothing up and then they've come back into it, you know, and it's a, a, a nervy ending to the game. So if we go two nothing up this weekend, John, we want to bury it, get a third goal, fourth goal. You know, obviously but that's if we go two nothing up. But um, yeah, you're right, John. I totally agree with that. So uh, that'll be interesting. Long ball or passing ball, I mean I've not watched many of their games. I think the only game I watched with them playing this season was when they got all to the Champions League. And they were dreadful in that game. So I'm only going by that, John. So I don't know. I mean, you can't look into home games against St Johnston and Ross County very much, you know. So um, we'll watch this space for that one, John. Right, John, that's it. That's the preview of the game. Um, it's absolutely roasting here, down here, John, by the way, at Celtic Park. Must be about 23 degrees just now. Um, and I'm sitting on this motor <laughs> so um, I, it's a beautiful day John it's going to be beautiful on Sunday as well I'm really looking forward to it that wraps up the preview John we've got, I've still got a lot to go through the Champions League draw and let's get into it then uh, but first I want your score prediction John before we get into it 
that's your big score prediction for the weekend. I'm going to say an edgy game. Uh, well, we don't know what the score's going to be, but I'm just going to stick my neck out and say 3-1 Celtic. Yeah, 3-1. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I'm saying 2 nothing, John. 2-0. Another clean sheet for the boys, Casper and goals. Obviously, Casper, that's one we need to touch on, actually. He's going to be under a bit more pressure, isn't he, Casper? But he's a top, top quality goalkeeper. We just hope he's... Because uh, he's had nothing to do in the first three or four games, but professional goalkeeper, John, his concentration level is going to be OK, isn't it? When he's called into action, he'll provide what he needs to do, and I don't worry about that. He's a he's a quality keeper. He's he's, he's no mug. Um Aye, nah, he'll be fine, I think. Yeah, there's no going to be a... I think his distribution is really good. I'm really happy with that because that's what Celtic saw about, passing about for the back, you know, passing it back to the keeper. And his distribution seems absolutely spot on, which is good. You kind of had your heart in your mouth a few times with Joe Hart. But I think that side of the game, I think Casper's better at that. And he's a better shot, shot stopper as well, I think. Yeah, yeah, yes, and I agree um, because... In, in America, when we went through, I know it was only friendly, but you just saw the class that Casper Michael had, didn't you? So, um, and he's got that solid defence in front of him as well. So, yeah, so it's, it's, as the song says, it's looking good just now. Um, hopefully that's still the case come three o'clock on Sunday afternoon, John. Um, all right, let's get into the Champions League draw. The new format, John, who have we got? We've got Sleipzig at home, Dortmund away, Bruges at home, Atalanta away. Young boys at home, Dynamo away, Bratislava at home, and uh, Battle of Britain, John, away down at Aston Villa. So, um, sort of favourable draw there, John. What did you think when you, when the drop the teams came out? Um, obviously, Dortmund, Villa, Leipzig, all very tough games. But you know, um, I think we've got a wee chance there. Uh, aye, it's a good draw for Celtic, I think. But they're, they're all quality teams. We're not going to say ah, it's, that's a, a back and draw for Celtic. But in the grand scale of things, it's a good draw, considering the, you know, the multi-million pound teams that's in the Champions League. Mm -hmm. In that aspect, you can look at it as favourable. Uh, Aston Villa, of course, is the one that sticks out for me. Uh, it's a pity that one was not at Celtic Park, because uh, I would have loved that. But uh, that's the one for me that sticks out as... Uh, the headline act, if you like. Although Dortmund are a fantastic team as well, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's not the same Dortmund team that Rangers played a few seasons ago, John. Dortmund have really improved over the last couple of years. So, yeah, um, Bruges, Atalanta, Young Boys, all, all tough teams. Dynamo, Bratislava, you know, they're all going to give us a game. Let's put it that way, John. So, the new format is obviously some one massive league into it. So, the top eight automatically qualify. The middle 16 have a playoff against each other to qualify. And then the bottom eight go out of Europe all together, John. So that's your new format. Um, I'm really looking forward to it, John. I don't know if the dates have been announced for these games yet. I'm not too sure. I didn't even check that out, to be honest with you. That's but, Saturday, um, I think. Is that? Right, OK. Right. Um, I like to say get home, you know. Let's, let's quickly run through each game, right? Leipzig, Leipzig at home. See, there's a chance there, John. We chance Leipzig, very good team, obviously, but at home, 60,000 screaming Celtic fans. There's a wee chance there, possibly. Don't know anything about Leipzig, apart from the last time we played them. We played them a few years ago, eh? Yeah, that's right, John. Um, yeah. They looked a decent team then. Ah, it's quite, they're all going to be tough games. Uh, uh do you want a score prediction on that one each? All right, okay. Quick score prediction, then uh, one nothing. Celtic. Pressure Dortmund away. That's probably one of the toughest ties out the lot. Dortmund away. Dortmund away, very, very tough tie. Champions League final last year, of course, beat 2 nothing by Real Madrid. Yeah, I, Dortmund's going to be very tough. Uh, my prediction is a, is a an arrow defeat, 2-1 defeat. Dortmund to beat 2-1. Aye, aye. Well, their Champions League final last year, there are no mugs. I'm going to say a narrow defeat as well. 2 nothing, Dortmund. Yeah, OK. Obviously, we, we don't know anything. We're just, we're just having a bit of fun here. Good uh, Celtic connection with Dortmund, Xander. 
Yeah, there is, John. Yeah, yeah, there is. Um, they're, they're a great team, Richard Dortmund, to be honest with you. Uh, moving on, John, uh, Bruges. Uh, home tie against Bruges. 2 nothing win for Celtic for me there. I'm going to say 3-1 for Celtic. OK, Atalanta, John. Uh, obviously, Atalanta have, have improved dramatically over the last few years. And it's away, it's in Italy, John. So, I'll take a draw. I'll take a two-weeks draw there. I'll take a draw there as well. Don't know anything about them again, Atalanta. Uh, but I'll say 1-1. Uh, one, one. Okay, okay, John. Young boys of Bern. Home tie there, young boys. 3-1. Uh, 3-1 three one. Three one Celtic. Uh, we played them years ago. I remember playing young boys and everybody was laughing. Ah, young boys. Uh, yeah, decent good team. team. Yeah, they were a very good team back then. So I don't know what they're like now, but uh, obviously they've been about the Champions League a long time, the Europa League and all that. Tricky game at home, Celtic two, young boys nil. Okay, look, uh, Dynamo away, John. Um, don't know too much about Dynamo, so uh, uh, I've never won for Celtic. Two one one for Celtic away. I don't know anything about them either. I'm going to say a draw there, zero zero. Okay. Um, just a bit of fun, remember, folks. Uh, we're quickly running through this. Bratislava, home tie against Bratislava. I think we played them years ago as well. Um, but it's changed days three years ago, John. So, home tie against Bratislava. I've got to look at the big crowd, etc. 2 nothing. One for Celtic. All right. Uh, I, uh, I'm going to say... Th- you lost connection there, Xander. I don't know. Are you still there? Yeah, still here, John. Yep, sorry. I heard the breakup there, yep. Sorry, apologies anybody for any breakup. Um, it's just because we're outside. I'm not using the Wi-Fi. I'm outside, so there's, um, there might be a wee bit of breakup now and again. So, um, so yeah, John, what are you thinking? at home. 2 one Celtic. Don't know anything about Bratislava. I'm just popping, I guess, out here. 2 one Celtic. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, 3 Yeah, I'll, I'll say 3 Um I don't know if I gave my guess before, but I think that's one of the sort of easier teams in, in the section John okay the big one Battle of Britain Aston Villa away um, John McGinn etc 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 Battle of Britain John it's just going to be a tough one isn't it it's one to look forward to as well okay what are you thinking ah, it's a tough one it's a very very tough one I'm trying to give an honest assessment the English game gets millions and millions pumped into it every team gets all that millions of free money so they're going to have some quality players there I think it'll be a narrow defeat for Celtic in that one. I hope it's no, but I'm going to say 3 1 Villa. Good luck. Uh, I think we're going to get a result. I'm going to think we're going to get a draw down there. Um, <laughs> obviously, we're talking nonsense. I don't even know what the teams are going to be or anything. So, uh, a draw, John, one each draw. So, that's it. That wraps up the, the section, Champions League section for Celtic. Yeah. Fair. Good draw, John. I think I missing out Barcelona, Real Madrid, you know, the usual Bayern Munich, so your giants of Europe. So, of course, they're a giant of Europe, but yeah, uh, we missed all these ones. I've got the mega, mega millions, John, apart from Aston Villa, possibly in Leipzig. They're, they're the ones I've got the mega bucks. Um, all right, John, we'll leave that there. Um, looking forward to that. Um, the, the actual fixtures, the dates and times will be announced, John says, on Saturday, so we'll keep an eye on for that one. Rivals Corner, John. Right, let's just a quick touch on this today, right? Because all I want to do is run through who they got and the, the Europa League Rangers. Um, they've got Manchester United at home. They've got Ange Potokoglu's Spurs away. They've got Leon at home. They've got Olympiacos who got to the Conference League final last season, John. They've got them away. <laughs> it's a very tough group. They've got Malmo away, Nice away. And then I've got a couple of easy ones, John. FSSB, never heard of them, at home. And Union Jalos at home as well, John. So there you go. What do you think of that group? Aye, there's a belter in it. I've never heard of a couple of their teams, but uh, SSB, is that Clyde Super Scoreboard or what? <laughs> Aye, FCSB at home. It's Clyde won Super Scoreboard reserves against Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, John, Man U at home, that's tough. Also, Man U, know the team they were. Spurs away, big and she'll take care of them, not a problem. That's down in Tottenham as well, down at London. Leon at home, very tough game. Uh, 
even Malmo, John, Swedish team Malmo away, you know, a tough one for Rangers, I think. They've got a good record in the Europa League, though. Um, that's the thing about them. They seem to do okay. They certainly do better than us in the Europa League. Um, but, you know, that all the teams are going to be tough for them, especially if they start hitting a dip in form, which they've not started the season strong. So, aye, it's no, it's not looking good for them. Man United, they're going to take points off them. Ange Postacoglu is, I think you're talking 7 nothing down there to Tottenham's under. That Tottenham team are a great team, and Ange has got that team flying, so... I think you're talking maybe a seven nothing down there. Man United at Ibrox, you say, is I? Um, yeah, yeah. If it's ready, if it's built, John, in time. Ah, if it's ready in time, that's going to be another uh, few goals. I mean, Man United reserves humbled them at uh, what do you call it, Murrayfield, in the friendly. Yeah. I think Man United they'll humble them at Ibrox. A couple of good teams yeah. in there, Malmo and that as well. Aye. Yeah. Uh, but they seem to do okay. But I think they'll do okay with the rest of the teams in that in that group. To be honest with you, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, both Champions League and Europa League, both new format, John. So one one to watch with interest in it. So that's that wraps up the rivals corner, John. I mean, the whole podcast is rivals corner, really, because we're playing Rangers. So um, that wraps it up. A wee quick touch on our other rivals in the league, John. Kamarnock out of Europe, Hearts out of Europe as well. No great news there, is it? Scottish team getting knocked out of Europe, right, left, and centre. Aye, I watched uh, the first half of the Commandant game and the second half of the, the Hearts game. The Hearts, very, very poor team. Uh, I thoroughly deserve to get put out, and I'm glad they're out. I don't like them anyway. No, as long as Stephen Naismith's in charge of them, I'll not get behind them in Europe. Just a quick one before we go, then, John, right? Bruni Watch, another Scott Brown, Air United. Um, another win for Air, Air United Scott Brown against uh, Wraith Rovers 2-0 and a uh, flying high at the top of the league Bruni John he's doing really well Aye and long may it continue I only wish Bruni all the best of success he deserves it he's a Celtic legend uh, aye long may it continue he's, he's got that Air United playing uh, fantastic football so aye. aye good luck to Bruni I hope he's in the Premier League next season keep it up Bruni yeah, it's looking that way. Premier League next season, as you say, John. It's, uh, it's I'm impressed. Unbeaten. And it's no draws, John. It's wins. Every game is won. So, yeah, good luck to Bruni at the weekend. Didn't check who they're playing at the weekend, but good luck to them anyway. Uh, that's Bruni Watch for this week, John. Um, uh, hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification bell if you can, please, to help out the YouTube channel. Um Good luck to Celtic on Sunday as well, John. Um, we're just going to wrap it up early in the day. Um, anything else you want to add, John? Any wee snippets you've got yourself or anything you want to add? Uh, no, I have, not, I have nothing to add, Sander. You, you've covered everything I wanted to uh, speak about anyway. Everything you spoke about is exactly what was on my mind. So, all good. Well done, Sander, getting through all that in such quick time. Okay, we'll wrap it up there, folks. That's us for the day. Um, thank you to John for coming on. He's just he's, he's cut off there. Thanks to John for coming on. Um, good luck to Celtic on Sunday as well. It's going to be a massive game. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, as long as we get the three points in the bag to go five points clear, that's all we're looking for. So good luck to Celtic on Sunday. Um, we'll catch John on the post-match on Monday as well. So good luck, Celtic. Catch us all later. Hail, hail for now. Thanks very much.